The Mandalorians. They are well known throughout the entire galaxy for their skills as warriors and their fearlessness. But where did they come from? What were their origins? Today, that's what we'll discover. So sit back, relax, and grab a cup of hot chocolate. Welcome to Star Wars Timelines. History pinpoints to an era millennia before the Republic. They began as a humanoid tongue species from Coruscant herself. The tongue fought between the 13 human nations of Coruscant, known as the Battalions of Zell. At some point during the fighting, the tongue species came to call themselves Da Verda Verda, which translated as the Warriors of the Shadow. The Warriors were eventually driven off of Coruscant and retreated to the world of Rune. Years later, in 7000 BBY, the Warriors conquered a planet in the Outer Rim which they named Mandalore, after their new warlord leader, Mandalore I. The Tongue then took the name Mandalorians and were seen as the most skilled fighters in the galaxy. They were known for their weaponry, code of honour, and their crusader armour that was individual to each Mandalorian. For thousands of years, the newly named Mandalorians never strode too far from Mandalore, only going as far as conquering the worlds of Ordo, Gargan, and Shogun. At one point, the Mandalorians assaulted a planet called Mandilia. Though the Mandalian giants repelled the Mandalorian forces, they eventually came to join the warriors, having impressed the Mandalorians with their strength and prowess. The Mandalorians continued their conquest, engaging a number of different species and planets, when just before 4000 BBY, the Mandalorians were led by a new Mandalore, Mandalore the Indomitable. He led their continuing campaign expansion, eventually leading a raid on the planet Iskadrel, where the Mandalorians freed the slaves of Iskaloni, taking some of them into their very culture including a scientist named Antos Wyrick, later known as Demogol. This brings us closest to what we see as Mandalorians today. In many ways, the Mandalorians haven't changed that much since this point in their history, keeping their code, armour and their clans. However, this does not mean that they don't evolve in other ways. Eventually, the Mandalorians sought further challenges, and the Mandalorian Crusaders moved towards the Deep Core, planning an attack on the Empress Tita system. There, the Mandalorians conquered Kor and used the ruined underground cities as a staging ground for their attack on Empress Tita, a city planet located in the Deep Core. When the Mandalorians destroyed a carbonite smelting station, they caught the attention of a Jedi turned Sith Lord called Ulic Keldroma, who had recently taken control of the Kraft forces in command of Empress Tita. Seeing a worthy challenge, Mandalore challenged Keldroma to a duel. Even with his skills, Mandalore was defeated and swore fealty to Keldroma and his Sith master, Exar Kun. This was known as the first Mandalorian Sith Alliance. However, while Mandalore had accepted his defeat and swore fealty to Keldroma and Exar Kun, several of his supporters had not, including Antus Wyrick, who was driven to try and unlock the mysteries of the Jedi power and the secrets of the Force. Before we continue, I'd like to quickly ask you guys if you could hit the thumbs up, subscribe and turn on notifications. It really helps me out and allows me to keep doing what I love. It would be super appreciated. Thanks everyone! With the Mandalorian and Sith Alliance formed, the Crusaders joined the Sith on an attack on the Republic shipyards in orbit around Thorost. Mandalore led his warriors through the station, eliminating all Republic forces. With the Sith and the Mandalorians combined, Keldroma was able to take quick control of Republic shipyards as well as 300 Republic ships docked there. With the war in their favour, Keldroma and the Mandalorians launched an attack on Coruscant. During the battle, Keldroma was betrayed by a Krath witch called Alima Keto, who had ordered the retreat of the Mandalorian and Sith forces. Keto then claimed Keldroma had fallen in battle, which led Mandalore to pledge loyalty to her. However, Mandalore quickly found out the truth about what happened and abandoned Keto, making for Yavin 4 with his Crusaders to seek the aid of Exar Kun. Exar Kun and the Mandalorians then travelled back to Coruscant, where they stormed the Senate building and rescued Keldroma, as well as killed Exar Kun's former master, Vodo Siosk Basque. Mandalore was then assigned to capture the royal planet in Isis on Onderon. The Mandalorian Crusaders managed to attack the city but were unable to prevent a message being sent to the Republic, warning them of the invasion. Led by Captain Orly Vansicius, a Republic fleet arrived to defend Onderon from the Mandalorians. The Republic fleet defeated the Mandalorian ships quickly. Watching his ships destroyed, Mandalore called a retreat to Dixon. During the retreat, Mandalore was separated from his Crusaders and became surrounded by Dixon's aggressive beasts. Though he fought well, he was overcome and killed by the beasts. A Mandalorian Crusader who went looking for his missing leader eventually came upon his mask 
where in accordance with Mandalorian tradition, he claimed the mask and became the new Mandalore. This marked the end of the Mandalorian's involvement in the Great Sith War. The war only lasted a year but still heavily damaged the galaxy. Now we move on to the aftermath of the Sith War and lead into the period known as the Old Republic. For 20 years the galaxy lived in peace and recovered from the damage inflicted during the Sith Wars. However the Mandalorians, under their new leader Mandalore the Ultimate, took the task of rebuilding the clans that had been diminished during the war. With most of the original species, the Tongue now dead, Mandalore expanded his recruiting efforts, welcoming all into Mandalorian culture. As a result, this led to an influx of warriors from worlds all over the galaxy. Under the advice of Mandalore's closest advisor, Cassus Fett, military ranks and uniformed armor was implemented to keep order amongst the heroes. At the same time, Antos Wyrick continued his research into the Jedi and the Force. He attempted to form a sect of the Force using Mandalorians called the Mandalorian Knights where he made a deal with the Crucible and traded his daughter for more test subjects. However, the Crucible attacked the Academy and captured all of his students. Antos Wyrick then returned to the Mandalorians but under a new name, Dr. Demogol. In 3976 BBY, two decades after the Great Sith War, Mandalore the Ultimate launched a campaign into the Outer Rim, just on the edge of Republic space. They began conquering several independent planets that were of no importance to the Republic, through this, the Mandalorian Neo-Crusaders were able to take territory larger than that ruled by the Huts within a decade. During this period, Cassus Fett attacked Cathar, where he herded the species into the sea where he ordered his Crusaders to kill all of them. Though one Mandalorian opposed and protested against the order, the Mandalorians fired a barrage on Cathar, killing the one Mandalorian that also opposed the order. In the end, they exterminated at least 90% of the species. Wary of being dragged into another war, the Republic continued to ignore the Mandalorians, allowing the warriors to continue to expand their territory and arsenal. Eventually, in 3964 BBY, the Mandalorians attacked a Republic outpost on Duxon and conquered Onderon, Taris, Vancuo and Serger. The victory on Serger even secured Jedi prisoners that were taken to a research station on Flashpoint where they were experimented on by Demogol. However, Thanks to a former Jedi attempting to clear his name called Zane Carrick and a renegade Mandalorian known as Roland Dyer, the Jedi prisoners were freed. Not before though, Demogol stole Roland's armor and disguised himself as Roland, leaving Roland to be captured by Jedi forces, tricking them into thinking he was Demogol. On the planet Sirocco, the Republic placed its defensive fortifications within the cities of the native Sterib species, under the assumption the Mandalorian forces would not attack a civilian population. However, the moment the Mandalorians arrived in the system, they launched a barrage of nuclear weapons and obliterated 27 populous centers, as well as crippled the Republic fleet protecting the planet. The Republic was now fully committed to the war with the Mandalorians, but even so, the Mandalorians were already on the verge of victory, with the Republic being overwhelmed on every front. The Jedi, on the other hand, still refused to be brought into the war. However, at this time, a group of Jedi known as Revanchists traveled to Cathar and revealed the Cathar genocide to the galaxy. Hundreds of Jedi flocked to follow Jedi Knight Revan and Malik into the war with the Republic. With this new effort, Revan led his followers against the Mandalorians and drove them off Taras and Duxon. In 3960 BBY, Revan led a confrontation with the Mandalorians above Malachor V. Revan drew dark powers off of Malachor and faced Mandalore the Ultimate in single combat, where he slew Mandalore. However, one of the Revan's Jedi Generals activated a super weapon known as the Mass Shadow Generator, which not only destroyed the Mandalorian fleet, but also badly damaged the Republic fleet. With their fleet in tatters and their leader dead, the Mandalorians surrendered unconditionally. The loss of the Mandalorian Wars affected the people badly. Revan stripped the Mandalorians of their armor, weapons, and the Mask of Mandalore. With no Mandalore to lead them, the clans scattered throughout the Outer Rim. Some warriors became bounty hunters and mercenaries in order to make a decent living. But it was not long before the galaxy found itself in another war. Revan and Malak had declared themselves the new Sith Lords and had claimed the power of the Rakatan artifact called the Starforge. Revan was eventually captured by the Jedi during a battle and his memories of the Sith were erased from his mind, and the Jedi used him against Malak. Revan eventually destroyed the Starforge and Malak along with it with the help of a former Mandalorian Crusader, Kandorus Ordo. After Malak's defeat, 
Revan gave the mask of Mandalore to Ordo and then disappeared from the galaxy to search for the true Sith that he believed lurked in the unknown regions. With the mask back with the Mandalorians, Ordo became the new Mandalore and took the name Mandalore the Preserver. He then began to reunite the clans. During his mission, he came across one of the last remaining Tongue. He was already dying when Ordo discovered him, but the Tongue claimed he was the original heir of Mandalore the Indomitable, and that Mandalore the Ultimate had only become Mandalore through the help of the Sith. The Mandalorians then began to rebuild and come together under the new Mandalore. Despite Ordo's attempts though, many clans refused the call to unite under him. For three centuries, the Mandalorians still remained apart. That was until 3661 BBY, the Sith Empire had returned to the galaxy. The Sith had made repeated attempts to recruit Mandalorians to their cause, however most of them had refused. After failure and failure to recruit, Imperial Intelligence took a different course of action. Intelligence officers had located a Mandalorian gladiator on Geonosis, with the potential to be the new Mandalore, and saw that if played right, he could be the Sith's pawn. Intelligence officers then began to drug the gladiator's opponents to ensure the gladiator succeeded in defeating them all. Eventually, the gladiator won the title of Mandalore. The clans then began to unite behind him. The Mandalorians, under their Imperial pawn leader, took up arms with the Empire to fight the Republic. Their biggest battle being the blockade of the Hydinian Way in which the Sith had tasked the Mandalorians with forming a blockade here to stop the Republic's supplies. However, the blockade was swiftly broken by Hilo Viz. With the blockade broken, the new Mandalore was given the name Mandalore the Lesser. His reign was short-lived when a Mandalorian warrior by the name of Artus challenged the Mandalore to a duel, where he shot and killed the Imperial Pawn. This new leader then claimed the name Mandalore and took the name Mandalore the Vindicated. The Sith and the Mandalorian's alliance continued but with the Mandalorians being cautious of their Sith allies. In 3637 BBY, the Eternal Empire began their conquest of the galaxy. This empire was led by the former Sith Emperor Vitiate, who now went by the name of Valkorion. The Mandalorians revolted against the Empire. Despite fighting well, Mandalore the Vindicated fell in battle after being overwhelmed by Sky Troopers. Shea Vizsla eventually took up the title, claiming her name Mandalore the Avenger who allied herself with an alliance of former Republic and Imperial fighters to take down the Eternal Empire. The Empire was eventually defeated in 3630 BBY. This now ends the period known as the Old Republic. The Mandalorians definitely had their victories, but their defeats far outnumbered these. The Mandalorians were never the same after this. The start of their era was their golden age for sure, but they fell so far after their defeat by Revan. It marked them for generations, and we still see this in modern day Mandalorians today. They've never reached the same power they had at the beginning of the era. In 2000 BBY, the Mandalorians waged war against the Sith for the first time in the new Sith Wars. This began when a group of Mandalorians was approached by a Jedi called Murtag. Sorry. The Jedi Master offered a large amount of credits in order to enlist the Mandalorians against the mysterious Dark Lord known as the Dark Underlord. The Mandalorians aided the Jedi Master who killed a mysterious Sith, but fell to the dark side in the process. In 738 BBY, the Mandalorian military alarmed the Republic and its Jedi protectors with its growing arsenal and warriors. A conflict broke out between the Republic and the Mandalorians that nearly destroyed the Mandalorians. The planet Mandalore was reduced to a barren white sand desert planet. Out of the ashes of the fighting, a new Mandalorian civilization rose. Doing away with the old warrior codes, the new Mandalorians decided the best option was for survival was to become a people of pacifism. The new Mandalorians constructed a grand cube in the desert. A faction of the warriors detested the idea of pacifism and rose up against the people but were banished to Mandalore's moon, Concordia. Years later in 22 BBY, the Republic had accepted the peaceful new Mandalorian government, now under the leadership of Duchess Satine Kreese and welcomed it as a Republic member world. However, when the Clone Wars broke out, the planet remained neutral, refusing to aid either the Republic or the Separatists. However, the remnants of the warriors that had been exiled to Concordia had allied themselves with Count Dooku and the Separatists to remove the Duchess from power. When the Republic got wind of the Separatist plan, the Jedi Council sent Obi-Wan Kenobi to investigate. Kenobi and the Duchess discovered that the governor of Concordia, Pre Vizsla, had allied himself with the Death Watch 
and the group was preparing to assassinate the Duchess. After repeated failed attempts, thanks to the help of Obi-Wan Kenobi, Kanda could cut ties with the Death Watch, who had to scatter to evade destruction. However, not long after Darth Maul, thought to have been slain by Kenobi on Naboo, began to build up his own power base known as the Shadow Collective, with his brother, Savage Opress. Pre Vizsla allied himself and the Death Watch with Maul and his Shadow Collective. Maul and Vizsla together recruited the Black Sun, the Hutt Cartel and the Pike Syndicate to the Collective. They then used the criminals to invade Mandalore. With the Duchess and her regime overwhelmed, the Death Watch then made themselves look like heroes and saviours by staging a defeat of the criminals. Pre Vizsla then made himself Prime Minister, however, this was short-lived as Maul defeated Vizsla in a duel. Maul then claimed the role of leader of Death Watch for himself. However, some members of the Death Watch, led by Bo-Katan, rebelled against him. The Duchess was captured and imprisoned, but was able to get a message sent out to Obi-Wan, who went to Mandalore to investigate what was going on. Maul captured Kenobi and executed the Duchess in front of him. Shortly after, Bo-Katan was able to free Obi-Wan and sent Obi-Wan back to the Republic to get help. Obi-Wan informed the Republic of what was happening, and with the help of former Jedi Padawan Ahsoka Tano and Captain Rex, the Republic sent a clone battalion to lay siege to Maul's holdings on Mandalore. Mandalore became a fully-fledged battlefield. During the battle, Ahsoka and Rex trapped Maul in a ray shield and the Republic was victorious. However, the victory was short-lived when Chancellor Palpatine, who was in fact the Sith Lord Darth Sidious, issued Order 66 which forced every clone trooper to turn on the entire Jedi Order. Unlike his brothers, Captain Rex had removed a control chip in his head which prevented him from attacking Ahsoka. During the chaos, Maul escaped and Ahsoka and Rex faked their deaths and fled the world which was now gripped in a massive wave of violence. The new empire which Palpatine had transformed the Republic into invaded Mandalore and established an occupation over the world. A group of Mandalorians known as the Protectors, led by Fen Rao, established a base on the third moon of Concord Dawn and were paid by the Empire to protect their systems. The other Mandalorians stayed on Mandalore under the leadership of Gar Saxon, the Imperial Viceroy of Mandalore. Gar Saxon eventually wiped out the Mandalorian protectors, which prompted Fen Rao to join the growing rebellion against the Empire. Eventually, Fen Rao and a Mandalorian called Sabine Wren journeyed to Clan Wren's stronghold to begin uniting the clans against the Empire. After convincing the clans to rise up against the Empire and killing Gar Saxon, Clan Wren fought on Mandalore with the help of the Rebellion against Clan Saxon and the Empire. Eventually, Clan Wren joined with Clan Kreez under the leadership of Bo-Katan. The combined Mandalorian and Rebel forces managed to decimate the Imperial forces. Following the battle, the Vizslas, Wrens, Kreez, Rooks and Elders pledged themselves to Bo-Katan, who was named the New Mandalore. Not much is known about the aftermath of the fighting. All we know is by the time of 9 ABY, the galaxy believed the Mandalorian people to have perished completely, in some kind of purge. One tribe though was hiding on the world of Navarro, and one of its members was a bounty hunter named Din Djarin. The clan was in hiding, but when they revealed themselves to aid Din Djarin, they had given away their location, and the ISB agent in charge of the original Mandalorian purge, Moff Gideon, attempted to wipe out the clan. The only known survivor was the weaponsmith, who charged Din Djarin with the protection of a child to return him home. That is where the Mandalorian story ends for now. However, you better believe there are more chapters left. See you next time, and may the Force be with you.